Welcome to the Black Hour Podcast, where I get to talk to amazing people who do amazing things. And today I have my friend, DJ, founder of Emo Nights in the Maritimes. And like, you, you're, you're so busy. But okay, first, I'm going to start with COVID happened. Like, how yeah. did that affect things? Uh, it affected a lot of people who do live shows and bars. We kind of adapted just using online things like Twitch. And that's what I did. But it did definitely affect, I mean, income, mm -hmm. uh, just getting out there. I missed the crowd. I just missed being in front of people. Mm. But really having the online platform helped quite a bit. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Twitch, it's like, I know Twitch is like people that game. How did you use it for what you do? So I basically just set up my DJ gear in my living room and just streamed music like I would live. Right. Yeah, so people would just sit in their living rooms and watch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Was there any way, uh, is there like any way of interacting with the with the people? They have a chat, actually. Oh! So there's a Twitch chat so people can write requests or you can watch what people are saying like live in time and you can text back to them. Okay, so, you know, cool, like, we, we started opening things up little bit by bit. How did you prepare for the very your very first show back? Where was it? It was actually at the Marquee. Oh no, it was in the Seahorse. It was in the Seahorse. Um, Those things confuse me because they're kind of in the same place. They are. Seahorse <laughs> is downstairs, Marquee is upstairs. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, so same bar, just down and up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I went back to the Seahorse and I think people were so eager to get out, we actually, I think that was my first sellout show wow. ever. Yeah, we still had to wear masks and people were fine with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think people were just so eager to get out. I had a lineup down the block. It was oh, crazy. Nice. Yeah, it was fun. It was very good to get back out and live and in front of people. I really missed it. Mm. Mm -hmm. What did you miss about it? Um, I like interacting with people. Right. Oh yeah, you do. When they show your videos, <laughs> I'm always like, I'm, I'm not been at the shows yet, but I'll be the one soon. Tell me, uh, you gotta call me, you gotta call me one. <laughs> but the Instagram videos are insane. I love it, I love it, love it, love it, love it. It's just a different, because you feed off the energy of the crowd, mm, right? And it's mm. just different being in front of people than I mean alone in your living room, but. So <laughs> once like things were finally open and you know, there wasn't really much of a, um, restrictions and stuff, what did you change? Because we sold out the Seahorse, um, they wanted to give me a try upstairs, which is quite a bigger venue. So we actually moved Emo Night upstairs to the Marquee, which holds 800 instead of three. Oh, yeah. fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> quite a big difference. Right. And my first show in the Marquee, we actually sold it out as well. Pooh! Yeah. Wow, holy <laughs> People smokes. really love their emo music. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, who does your social media? Cause like those, <laughs> those, Me. um, those memes are insane. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you find them? Like they're crazy. Oh, I just scrolling through the internet and I find them. I share them because I think they're funny. I think they're funny. Yeah, they're insane. <laughs> okay, okay. So, I mean, you had sold out shows. Mm. And then it, it must feel good to see that this thing is static. Cause you, I think when we last talked to you, you it was like in New York that you saw. Yeah, so Brooklyn, yeah. Yeah. And actually, I got Emo Night Brooklyn shirt on right now. <laughs> I finally actually got to go to one of their shows. Yeah, wait. Um, I'm not saying I stalk you on Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> but I so checked out your Instagram and look. Um, um, you, you, there was this one you, was that the one you went to like in, was it? Las Vegas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how was that experience? Gosh, it was a crazy wild experience. Lots of ups and downs for sure. We so let's start with the downs first. Okay, so we went for the festival called When We Were Young. It's just a massive one day festival that uh, has all the emo bands I listen to mm -hmm. and play at my shows. So we had a Saturday ticket. They had Saturday and Sunday. Mm. And we were standing in front of the gates and they canceled the show. Because... Wind. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was windy, so they had to cancel the show. So that was definitely a down. However, a lot of the bands actually put together little side shows mm. because 
the whole festival can canceled. So we were able to go see the um, the Wonder Years and uh, La Dispute play at a little bar, mm. which was really cool. Like seeing the bands you want to see in a big stadium or outside, I guess, play in a really small bar to like a couple mm. hundred people is actually so much better. We did end up getting tickets to the Sunday show. We were able to go. So it all kind of worked out for the best, I guess. Mm. Well, how is like, like it's okay? So I've never been, but what, what's your experience with Las Vegas? Like, is it <laughs> is it like really that loud? Did you did you gamble at all? Gambled a little bit, honestly. <laughs> I'm not a gambler. I'm more of a sightseer. So okay. we went out to the Grand Canyon. Yes, you on the drop top. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There was a nice Mustang convertible we rented. <laughs> It was really fun. Um, it is loud. It is 24-7. I think for me, it was a one and done. I saw oh, what I needed to see. Okay. And I'm good. I think I'm good. <laughs> it's very expensive. It is? <laughs> very expensive. Why? Like, for some... I don't know why I thought it would be not as expensive. Oh, it's wild. <laughs> it's wild. Like, we were just eating at the cheapest places, like Olive Garden and In-N-Out Burger. Like, oh my God. Just got to keep it... Cheap yeah, as possible. I don't know. I just thought it would be like, I mean, yes, of course, they're like super expensive things, but I just thought the whole thing is kind of designed for you to come in and, I mean, anyway, anyway, Hell you had a great thing. Oh, yeah. So um, now you you came back and then you started going out of the, so what was, when was the first time you went out of the HRM area after COVID? I went, I think I went home to St. John to play right after COVID. I've actually expanded, since I last talked to you, I've gotten a few more cities as well. I'm getting in Moncton now and, and Fredericton now. So a couple more since I've last seen you. How did, well, okay, well, what, why did you decide to check out those cities? Well, I've always wanted to. And they're, they're main little, like they're little cities on their own and mm -hmm. sometimes it's, people can't get to Halifax to come to a big show. Mm. So I like to try and get into the smaller places as well. They're all part of the Maritimes. Exactly. <laughs> I've always thought that Moncton, you know, it's one place you should be. So I'm mm. glad you're doing Moncton now. Um, okay, so the, I don't know, was it the last one? But I love the one with the Pokemon theme. What was the story there? I just really like Pokemon. <laughs> 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 so I wanted to incorporate it into one of my shows. So you want to know the funniest story is that I really don't know much about Pokemon, but like my the guy behind the camera like loves Pokemon, has like this huge thing and he's like always buying the cards and stuff and I'm I'm trying to learn about them. So when you had that event, I was like, oh man, this is cool. Um, and then you had someone perform with like the flowing thing. Yeah, I'm trying to get more performers on stage with me. Just get stuff like people to look at. Mm. Like uh, no one really, well, I shouldn't say no one really wants to just look at you on stage. <laughs> Maybe they do. Maybe they do. But I like having <laughs> stuff going on as well. That's mm. why we have like Wasco do the lighting and I'm just trying to get more acts to come in. I'm also trying to incorporate more like collaborations. So with the Pokemon one, I actually had a friend, Kyle, DJ as well. So he made his own little set of emo music and Pokemon music, actually. <laughs> and I got him up there and he played for an hour, too. Yeah. It's really nice because, I, I mean, I'm up there for four hours usually by myself. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have someone else have the spotlight and mm. also give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, he, he started the show and then you came on or how did you set that um, up? No, I started it. He came on at midnight, played for an hour, hour oh, and a half, and then I got back on. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like, hey, everyone came here to see Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been trying to do that more. The well, next the next show is going to be like that as well. When is that set up for? That's next Saturday, actually. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my, where is it? At the Marquee. So, I mean, like, how does it feel selling out such a massive place? Amazing. Mm. Not something I thought I would ever do, but it definitely shows that people in Halifax really love their emo music. Hmm. Okay, I mean. Now that, you know, you started this thing, like I said, because you love this thing in Brooklyn, and then it is growing exponentially, where do you see it going? I mean, because now you're in, in more th towns, yeah. you're, you're like, what's next? 
I just want to keep it going. Um, again, trying to collaborate more with people, bring people in to do stuff with me. I think that's definitely the next step. And people seem to be really liking the idea. Do you reach out to them or is it the reverse? Uh, it, it really depends. It goes both ways. Mm. Uh, the one that is next weekend, I had a band reach out to me. And they're going to be doing a Paramore tribute. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you... Huh. I mean, so, I, I mean, I know you kind of work on your set and stuff, but with the band, how will that work? Like, are they going to rehearse? Are you yeah. going to check them out? So, well, no, they're rehearsing on their own. They mm -hmm. have their set list and everything. So they'll come up, they'll play their songs, and then I'll kind of play in between them. Oh. So I'll start, they'll play, and then I'll play, and then they'll play. We'll just kind of go back and forth like that. And uh, the Wasco lights, I mean, freak. I, see, I, I don't know the show I first saw it, but I was like, holy shit. It looked like... You know, like you had a Las Vegas DJ convention thing. Oh my gosh. He's so, amazing. how did that collab happen? Well, Wasco works with the Seahorse and the Marquee quite often. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I see him do lights for light events everywhere. like light, every, everything. He does every, everywhere. He does all the events everywhere always. Mm -hmm. um, so, I was like, I need, I need him. I need him. So, I just asked him, and sure enough, yeah. So, we have a little thing going, and I, I book him to do my lighting, and it is always amazing. Do you do you see it before you just kind of... No, I just let him do his thing. Oh, my God. That's like... I mean, he's great at what he does, but yeah. are you ever going to have, like, a specific thing you want at some point? Well, the Pokemon thing was kind of specific, so yeah. they did that. He had a team work with him for that one, and mm. I think it turned out great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let you go with this one now. Um, you, you, you had this dream, and, you know, it's like, I love music. I'm going to play people who listen. But it's like come to life, right? Like you're pretty much living your dream right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there, I guess, when someone is watching, listening, <clears throat> and they're like afraid to follow their dreams, what would you tell this person? Just do it. Just do it. That, that's all you have to do. If you have a niche or if you have something you love to do, just do it. If, you might fail, you might not. Just, just try. You, can, you have to try. Like, I didn't know how it would turn out for me. I just reached out and did my first show, and I was like, this is it. We're doing it. Wow. Yeah. Great to talk to you. I can't wait to finally come out to the Animal Show, because, like, I, I, I mean, it looks like it's so much fun. Yeah. It's so much fun, and you're, like, out there, and you're, listen, you're playing, but you're also, like, kind of partying with the crowd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today, Sarah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.